Hansa Park is a unique theme park in northern Germany. This park has always been revered by locals for its appearance, but it rose to prominence among coaster enthusiasts over the past decade for a dynamic duo of Gerslauers. The ride mix and thematic choices make it one of the country's weirdest parks, but is it also one of the best parks in Germany? Find out in this review of Hansa Park. This park interestingly opened back in 1973 as Legoland Sierksdorf. It was the second Legoland park. However, Lego sold the park after just three years, and they would not build another theme park until the 1990s. In 1977, Legoland Sierksdorf reopened as Hansa Land, and in 1987, it received the current Hansa Park name it goes by today. Unless you know this park's history, you would have no idea this was a Legoland park. It doesn't have the usual ride lineup or architecture of those parks. Hansa Park looks and feels like a traditional German theme park. You have lushly landscaped gardens, plenty of trees, charming buildings, and some nice theming. This is one of the most underrated parks in all of Europe when it comes to appearance. I love how this park looks, and the park has improved significantly in this area over the past one and a half decades. Their newest rides have been extremely well themed. This is best exemplified by their newest three coasters, all of which are from Gerslauer. Flucht von Novgorod and Schwerdes Karnen are two of the most highly themed thrill coasters out there. These are the two rides that gain the park notoriety with the coaster community. Then you also have Schlang von Midgard for families. All three rides feature extensive stories, elaborate theming in the queue, and even dark ride elements. And they feature custom soundtracks too to complete the overall ride experience. It is stunning how much detail the park puts into their newer rides. Then the park has also gone back and rethemed some older attractions. The best example of this is Nessie. This coaster once had a bear station. Now, it's housed in a castle with atmospheric lighting and custom music. One interesting thing with the appearance of the coasters here is that most of them have green track and supports. I'm guessing this was done to help them blend in with the trees. The theming goes beyond just the rides. Hansa Park advertises they have 11 different themed areas. All sections of the park look great, but some areas have a stronger, more cohesive theme such as the Wild West area and the Viking section. And all this beauty and theming is made even better by the park setting. Hansa Park is located in northern Germany. The park is situated atop a hill overlooking the Baltic Sea. The tallest rides offer a stunning vista overlooking the water. You can easily access this park by both car and train. I've done both. If you arrive by car, you park across the street for 5 euros. Then you use an elevated footbridge to cross over and reach the park. If you arrive by train, you arrive at Sierksdorf Station. You then have a roughly 1 mile walk to the park. The trains are plentiful, and it was quite easy to get here from downtown Hamburg. The main entry plaza looks fantastic. You have these old-fashioned German buildings, highlighted by the brick castle you enter through. Hansa Park also has a back entrance for guests staying at the park's on-site resort. I haven't personally stayed here, but I have walked through it. The buildings look fresh, and the placement is incredible. Not only are you just an elevator ride away from the park, but you're mere feet from the Baltic Sea. This is a pay one price park. As of 2022, adults pay just short of 50 euros to enter. And I think that's a fair price given the deep ride lineup for all, and all the investments this park has made both in terms of new attractions and theming. The park spans 113 acres, but it is very easy to navigate. You have a main loop around the perimeter, plus a series of pathways cutting through the center. This allows you to get from point A to point B quite quickly, despite the park's size. It can be a bit tricky to locate the main entrance for a few of the coasters. You'll see the track flying above your head, but you may need a circle around the attraction to actually find the main entrance. Now let's talk about the operations. Hansa Park is a mixed bag in this section. There are things they do extremely well, and there are other things that can cause headaches. Hansa Park staff members pride themselves in efficiency. They know how to load vehicles and check restraints very quickly. This sometimes comes at the expense of friendliness, to be honest. Many of the rides will still garner noticeable weights here. 
Many of the coasters either run one train and or have really short vehicles. For example, there are two signature coasters that have really low throughputs. Karnan is just 16 passenger trains, and Novgorod is 8 passenger trains. These two rides routinely have 45 to 60 minute waits, and there are wait time boards out front that are fairly accurate which do help you consider when to get in the line. Then several supporting coasters and non-coasters can get half hour waits as well. This can make it tricky to do everything in a day, especially since the park isn't open too late. Typically, they're open from 9am until 6pm daily, but there are two complications. One, rides don't open until 10am, so while you can usually make a quick lap of attractions at other parks before crowds reach the attractions, rides will open here with a sizable wait already. Two, rides can close early. I have been able to hop in line for car and near close in both my visits, but I have heard from others and staff members that they can close lines early so the last train goes out closer to closing time, so plan accordingly. And this is one of those parks where there is not a skip the line pass. So how should you tackle this park? I think you need a full day here for sure. If you need all the credits, I would advise starting with Schlang von Midgard. This is the slowest moving line in the entire park. If Karnan's weight is still manageable, I would hit that next. I would then make a loop of the coasters and save time at the end of the day for re-rides on Karnan. Two other notes on the coaster queues. One, Flucht von Novgorod features a single rider line. However, it is not accessible until midway through the indoor queue. At that point, the standby line only has another 15 or so minutes to go, but it can still save some time. Two, Nessie is the most efficient coaster by far. That ride has been a near walk-on in all my visits. Now let's move on to the ride lineup. Hansa Park advertises they have nearly 100 attractions, but it's worth noting they consider theme buildings and structures as attractions. They have roughly three dozen mechanical rides. The park features seven different roller coasters, and I think it's a balanced collection for its size. You have two major thrill coasters, an intermediate thrill coaster, three decent family coasters, and a kiddie coaster. Schwerdes Karnen is the clear star. This is the largest coaster in all of Germany, and it's the largest coaster Gerslauer has ever built by far. This ride stands 240 feet or 73 meters tall, and the main drop is housed in a giant castle. And this ride is a powerhouse. It has a case as the most intense ride in all of Europe. It has some powerful ejector airtime, wicked laterals, and powerful positive Gs. And the sense of speed is incredible because much of the layout hugs the ground. Then there are some incredible tricks inside the tower that really add to the experience. I won't spoil them here, but check out my review if you want to know all those details. The one downside with this coaster is that it's pretty shaky. Combined with that raw intensity, it's easy to come off this ride with a headache. Then along with the ride itself, you have a wonderful story. I still cannot believe how much detail Hansa Park put into this attraction. Flucht von Novgorod is my favorite Gerslauer Eurofighter. This ride, like Karnan, has nice theming. You have details in the queue line and multiple dark ride sequences. Then the coaster also has some of the best elements of any Eurofighter. There are two standout elements indoors that I don't want to spoil here in case you're unaware what they are. Then the outdoor bit is two more strong elements between the ejector airtime filled camelback and the hang time filled barrel roll. Just make sure to watch your head on some of the transitions. This ride is fairly smooth overall, but the over the shoulder harnesses can hit your head in a few spots, which I note in my review. Nessie is a good Schwarzkopf. This classic looper is just one inversion, but it makes it count with a forceful vertical loop. But where this coaster really differentiates itself from the other Schwarzkopfs is in the airtime department. If you ride in the back car, there are three great drops. The second drop is the standout moment. It has some shocking ejector airtime. It is one of the best airtime moments in all of Germany, which I note in my review. Intertwined with Nessie is Royal Scotsman. This is a Vacoma family coaster. It uses the same ride system as their roller skaters but this ride has a larger and more elaborate layout. Not only do you have nice visuals going over and through Nessie, but the turns also have a pinch of force to them. Crazy Ma is a Mauer Wild Mouse, 
and it's a pretty good one too. The first half runs unbraked, giving some great laterals. The second half has some braking, but you still get a few spots of airtime, and the ride is plussed by some theming. And this includes a giant observation tower that offers some of the best views of Karnan if you're into photography. Schlong von Midgar is a Gerslauer Jr. coaster. Like Karnan and Novgorod, you have some theming in both the queue line and ride section. Then the layout, while small, induces some solid laterals. It is also located over the water, and you get two laps as well. The final coaster is Klein Azar. This is a Preston Barbieri Kitty coaster. It has a basic layout, but it's smooth, and adults are permitted to ride even without a child. On that note, it is worth noting how strong this park's ride lineup is for kids. Unlike some parks that have a lone dedicated kitty area, almost every section of this park has something for the young ones. You have small clusters of kitty rides. Alternatively, you also have playgrounds and themed houses for them to explore. I really liked how balanced this lineup was in terms of offerings and placement. There's something for everyone as you make your way through the park. I also found it interesting this park had not one, but two junior log flumes. In general, this park is stacked in the water ride department, and that is sort of surprising considering the average temperature doesn't usually go above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, even in summer, but people will still queue up for these rides even on cooler days. Super Splash is the most notable water ride. This is a short, intimate flume in terms of length but it has a sizable double down nearly 7 stories in height. The second part of that double down gives some floater airtime. Just lean forwards because it can jackhammer. And if you want to stay dry, know that this ride offers barely more than a sprinkle. Vild Wasserbahn is an arrow log flume. The drops are just okay in this one, but the layout has some nice landscaping, and if you want to get wet, the smaller drop can soak you. Stort Baker's Capper Fart is a Whitewater West spinning raft ride. Honestly, it feels more like a spinning ride because the boat spins like a top the whole way down. Just know there are free water guns by the ride, so you can easily come off wet if kids find them. Barracuda is a racing wet dry water slide consisting of a triple down. Not only can you race, but the second hump will lift your raft off the entire slide, and it's a scary moment. Then you also have a slower scenic boat ride that you commonly find in European theme parks. For flat rides, Hansa Park is a nice mix. You have a handful of spinning rides peppered throughout the park. Then you have four noticeable flats that should not be missed. Highlander is the tallest drop tower in all of Europe. This fun time creation stands 39 stories tall. And remember, Hansa Park is atop a hill, so you are much higher above sea level. It is a stunning view, and you rotate at the top so everyone can take it in. Then the drop itself is quite terrifying too. The seats tilt to the top. Then you're released with no warning. You get a quick stomach drop at the start, and then you float the entire way down. And that drop feels like an eternity. If you'd prefer to take in the views at a more leisurely rate, you can try the whole Steinturm observation tower, because it's just a smidge shorter than Highlander. Carnapulton is a Gerslauer Skyfly. This user-controlled ride can offer dozens of flips if you know what you're doing. You need to patiently and rhythmically throw your weight around to get that first flip. You then can hold the fins to rapidly rotate for the remainder of the ride. It is shocking how fast you invert if you know what you're doing. Then Space Scooter is a bizarre set of bumper cars. The cars have good speed and power to them, but that's not what makes this ride special. Rather, it's the fact the cars are fit with laser guns. The goal is to ride around the arena shooting at nine different targets. Whoever hits all nine first is victorious. I have never seen this feature in any other bumper cars, and it adds an element of chaos. You can either try to win the race, or you can pummel those who are. One flat that unfortunately has been removed is Glock. This was a unique frisbee from Fun Time where riders were seated inside a giant bell. While it looked undeniably cool, it had terrible capacity. When I rode it in 2019, I got a good cycle with plenty of floater airtime, but I heard it was running much weaker in its final days. One ride type this park sadly lacks is a conventional dark ride. While their newer coasters have dark ride elements, 
It would be neat to see what this park could do with a full-fledged dark ride full of theme sets. I hope that is something they're considering in the future, because they do theming so well. You do still have a track shooting ride, though. You know those rides where you usually mount a horse and ride along a track? Well, the one at Hansa Park gives riders a gun to fire at targets, making it an enjoyable ride for all ages. Definitely looking to try and pony post for this reason. Beyond the rides, you have some active attractions. You have plenty of playgrounds and giant trampolines. Then you even have a ropes course that is included with admission. You also have some theme buildings, but none of them brings a bigger smile to my face than the saloon that tells cowboys to scrape poop from their shoes. Except, they use a word more vulgar than that. They also have a handful of shows, but I cannot speak to their quality. Due to the wait time for the rides, I've had to prioritize those in my visits. I can comment on the food though because I've had a few meals here. Food is very fairly priced here. I love the pretzels sold near the front of the park. Then I've had some good fish and chips over by the wave swinger. One final note. Not all the employees know English. Some speak it, but compare that to some of the country's larger parks where most employees will speak English fluently. That makes sense because Hansa Park is less of a tourist destination. Just something to keep in mind if you're coming from abroad. So do I recommend Hansa Park? I sure do. This is a unique park that has a lot to offer. The landscaping and theming are very impressive for a regional park. This place is beautiful. Then you have a strong ride lineup. Karn is an incredible coaster that should be on every enthusiast's bucket list. Then you have a diverse mix of supporting rides, covering a wide range of categories and thrill levels. There truly is something for everyone here. I would suggest a full day here. That's enough time to hit all the major rides and get a re-ride or two in the big ones, but no, you will not have time to experience every little thing in between the hours and wait times. The park really could use another high-capacity coaster to help out with the crowds. So those are my thoughts on Hansa Park. What are your thoughts on this weird German theme park? Do you like this park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.